do that. And basically, that's at the core of anti-gravity. And so these people are out there doing that now, and it's kind of like the replicator idea of the food service on Star Trek uh, Enterprise kind of thing, right? And at that level, your energy needs and your food needs are met. Someone shows up on your doorstep, it's like, well, guy, you know, I'm every bit as powerful as you. You can't push me around anymore. A lot of people uh, wouldn't be pushed around. One one question we've had from the, the viewers is, could you uh, give an example or some examples of, of free energy devices? Sure. Actually, there are some that actually appear to be working now. And they're, they're not free, but they're what are called over-unity. That is to say, you get more energy out than you put in. And those are the cold fusion devices. The issue of cold fusion is that it apparently only works when it's at a um, hyperdimensionally sensitive area. <coughs> and so these are known spots on the planet that correspond to the intersection of the giant tetrahedron, so to speak, that is at the core of everything and uh, expresses itself out through all the various energy levels. So the cold fusion does work. There are um, examples of using that level of energy coming out of Russia now, and these include things like the device called the uh, Skinar Cosmodique, and it's a, uh, a method of using electrical energy in very finely pulsed format to change the human body, and it tickles the ability of the particular cells and tells them, rearrange yourself back to where you were before the injury. And it's rather a remarkable device. It's not instantaneous, and it's not the cure for everything, but it, it says that we're on the appropriate way there. And true, it doesn't work on free energy, but it's in that same category of, of devices that come from hyperdimensional or hyperspatial uh, quantum understanding. So the issue is, I don't have a free energy device at the moment. I've seen some examples of things that that I consider to be over unity devices, magnetic motors, etc., that I could turn into a never ending source of electrical energy with no problem at all. And these are available to be seen under the heading of magnetic motors on YouTube if you want to go and look at them. Right. Some of them are really quite staggering, and I'm in the process of building a few of them myself if I can ever get the time. Because you can hook them up to a generator and just have them trickle charge your system. But the free energy devices that we're, that we're discussing are related to the hovering triangles that are said to have been. Uh, perfected by the U.S. shadow or the shadow government that controls all of the Anglosphere in 1956. And there's enough mass of evidence that suggests that they indeed have perfected those. And then our data suggests that some of these secrets will be coming out over this next year in, in fits and starts and clumps as various different things occur. And let me also point out something else. It is a telling bit of um, information just knowing how much is being redacted by the government. So, for instance, if one were to make a freedom of information request relative to over-unity devices or uh, any of these various different terms, and then you got back uh, 1,000 pages of which 998 were blacked out, well, it tells you that there's a whole lot of evidence they don't want you to see. And just based on the number of redacted pages versus delivered pages, there's about 100 to 1 correspondence. So for every page they deliver in a Freedom of Information Act response to anything related to the to over unity or zero-point energy, there are 100 pages that are delivered in a mostly redacted format. So that really tells me that indeed they have perfected it because they're trying to hide so much. Wow. Is there a, Are you aware of any websites that talk specifically about that type of, uh, about the devices and, and the amount of data, like examples of these FOIA requests where you could actually see? Sure. The, the place to start would be Tom Bearden's site, okay. Thomas Bearden. And he's, uh, you can put in free energy and Tom Bearden in any search engine and start piggybacking from there. And he has links on his site that will take you to other sites and just keep going. Okay. And we've had another question come in here. Uh, they're asking if you're aware of an alliance between Russia, Canada, Scandinavia, regarding the new electrics. Okay, that's, that's what we show coming out in um, 2013 or so onward. Our data in a general sense, in a broad sense, suggests that a renaissance is coming to humans after we get through 2012 and we start in on 2013. It suggests that that renaissance will be powered by what we call the new electrics. The new electrics is the outbreak of all this information about how to create free energy, etc. Bear in mind, it, it'll take us a number of years to get that spread throughout society, just the way it took us a number of years to electrify the country, sure. and regardless of what mechanisms we use to distribute this. But anyway, our data suggests that there's a uh, 
core of resources between Siberia, Canada, and Brazil that will form a, um, a central component of the free energy into the future. And it appears to be related to a crystalline structured element or molecule or something uh, that will be dug up in Canada and mined there very successfully for decades and decades and will be at the core of all of this. I can't say what the nature of that crystalline structure or material is, we just have a very vague description of it because of the nature of the language around it. But indeed, there's that kind of like little triangle there from Siberia, where they're also going to have some necessary component of this to knowledge base that comes out of Brazil to uh, the crystalline mine material in Canada. And, and that probably will form a control mechanism or some central core of these um, uh, new electrics or new energy machines. Okay. Uh, one other question we've had from our viewers is they're asking for you to elaborate on uh, what they call the female power collective. What this is, is that? An interesting, yeah, this is an interesting thing that's been, been building for a number of years. It was difficult for us to interpret because it's a very primal kind of an archetype. And for a long time, I thought I was just getting it confused with the references to the um, Aquarian Age and the feminine, feminine archetype that comes from that. But then after a while, it started separating within our data, so I knew I was dealing with an actual manifesting set of circumstances. And so we started calling it the Female Power Collective, for lack of any other descriptor for it. And basically, what the data is suggesting is that the whole of society will be, at a planetary level, will be topsy-turvy from a male viewpoint in that the collective um, decision-making, let's put it that way, of uh, of the planet as a whole will be led by and probably to a certain extent controlled or guided by uh, feminine input. Now, we're starting to see some of that at a social level, and by that I mean that within the United States in this particular recession, depression, whatever you want to call it, um, we're seeing that males are the ones that are taking the brunt of the unemployment, and females, by and large, are, are not getting as laid off as rapidly. And in fact, it's left us with a situation where more than half of the workforce now is is uh, female, and so the already we're starting to shift into a feminine collective for decision making, and this is bound to have an amplifying effect as we go forward. But there's also something in our data that suggests it's going to have a very rapid growth from some kind of external uh, situation that I can't really describe because the level of we probably don't have the words modeled correctly to get an appropriate viewpoint from it. But nonetheless, it appears that over the course of the next four or five years, if you think of the previous 100 or 200 or 300 years as being the male-dominated centuries, we're about to have that reverse. We're going to go into a transition period that will ultimately lead to feminine-dominated uh, social structure. It, how, how will that, uh, do you have any more detail on how that would actually manifest itself in day-to-day -day life? Or? Well, as part of the reorganization after the nasty part of the revolution stuff over the next few years and the disruption of the um, uh, uh, global infrastructure due to the earth changes that we're all going through, that we're all undergoing, the uh, data suggests that it, our SOCs, our, our um, uh, self-organizing collectives, will be by and large uh, centered around individual women who will then join up in a neural network fashion into cells of larger and larger socks. And so it will be the sort of the order of the old Cherokee nation uh, form of organization around a tribal collective, only in this case, much of the center of that tribal collective will be female in nature. Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you what's kind of interesting about that is there's one forum that I read once in a while called the tree of liberty com, And uh, now that you are talking about the female power collective, uh, it is a lot of the members on that particular forum are female. I don't know if that... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Related. See, that's ex expressing in that archetype at another level. Because archetypes are extremely powerful here. That's why it's very difficult sometimes for us to get the appropriate word to get the idea across. Because an archetype will be felt at a personal level. You'll see it at, a, at your local social level, probably because you'll notice over this next little bit of time that almost all of your local politicians are feminine or female and so on and so on. You'll start seeing this aspect appear over and over and over again. And then it'll gradually work it up to where we're dealing with it at a planetary level. Does, it, does this mean that uh, Sarah Palin is going to become a, a, new, a hero of the new era? Or 
Well, I don't comment on individual personalities. Right. Because usually we don't get anything other than hot language around those personalities 